Right guys, welcome back. I do a filter clean tonight. Been promising uh, to do it for a while and after modding my filter a little bit, probably time. Uh, a couple of shout outs first of all. We've got some mugs. We'll start with this one. Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury Kite. Great channel. Rob at Shrewsbury Kite. Go and check his channel out. He's got some really nice fish. He's got a new Aka Matsuba. What I need is a big heron to fly over Shrewsbury. Pick that fish up and uh, drop it in that pond. <laughs> Only joking. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish though. Go, go over to the channel and check it out. And um, yeah. He's got an easy pod as well that, that needs to be set up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great patio ornament for the time being. I look forward to uh, seeing that get installed. Shrewsbury Koi. Check him out. Head over to his channel. Check him out. He does weekly updates, which I don't. And I love watching him. Keep up the good work, Rob. Wow, we'll have a bit. Yeah, I was going to say. You don't come to Brizzle Koi. Not have a beer in a new mug. Whoop! Got the. I never tasted this before. But I thought, why not? Cheers, Bob. Shoes be quite. Oh, not a bad drop. Right, let's crack on with this filter clean. Back to these two mugs in a minute. Bring this with me. Pong's doing well. Pergola's doing well, fitted some light in. One there, that lights up the front. <coughs> one up there, one over in that far corner. There you go. Fish are all doing good. Really need to treat that carco again. I've done one treatment. I'm gonna do this filter clean tonight, I'm gonna treat it tomorrow night. Because it's getting better. I, I, because it was getting better daily, I thought, right, I'm not going to treat it just yet. Let's just see how it goes. But yeah, the last day or two, I thought, right, I'm going to do it again. So, into the shed. I'm going to find a nice place to prop you. Bit of a mess in here. It is a functional shed. See, I'll put you up there. Let me just go over this again one more time. So, pump fed system from the pond. The torch. From the pond, an inch and a half up through the 30 watt UV, down into the first barrel. So, initially I had K plus media in this one. Clay, K plus me doing this one, static beds, a moving bed. But what I found was the water was lifting the K plus media up and running through here without passing through the media. So particles were escaping to the next barrel before going through the media. So because of the shape of the barrel, I was struggling to fit anything in there to hold that media down so that the water was forced to pass through it catching all the, the debris. So the first thing I did was I bought some um, uh, sponges, cut them the right size, one, two, three, I put them in there and that worked a treat, it really did. Um, when I did the filter clean after that I'd never seen the water so dirty and the media in there was clean, so everything had been caught in that. But the thing was, I had to clean the sponges then, and, and the whole point in this system is boiling the, the media so you don't have to get your hands wet. Make it as easy as possible. So I needed to go back to my original idea of finding something to fit in the, the drums. So what I went with was, I found a piece of Perspex, um, I cut it to the shape, drilled loads of holes in it, and I've put that in this barrel, 
I took all the media out of this one and I've changed that into a swirl filter, vortex. So that's a vortex filter now. It goes down and it's forced through all that media, through the plastic disc and into the next bow. And that was about a week and a half, two weeks ago I did that and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with it. So, let's see if I can show you that in there. Hopefully my phone doesn't end up in the barrel. All right, see in the bottom of the barrel? There? Yeah, so that's working. Lovely. See it all collected there? It's brilliant, you can see it spinning. Hold the camera still. Yeah. It's been three days now since this was out of clean, so this is the longest I left it. I'm doing it every two days. This is three days. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You see the media, you can't see the disc because it's burst back. There is a disc in there full of 8mm holes and it's cable tied. Because it, I was, I was struggling to fit anything in there, but this Perspex I've bent in and it fitted in perfectly. And I've just cable tied it onto that pipe. Uh, let me put that down, All right, you can't see. You can see the cable tie there and there. That's what's holding the disc in place, along with a little cable tie on that air pipe there, because the media does try and push it up as it gets dirtier. So yeah, apart from all the flies on the top of that, the water's pretty clear in there. And then obviously, oh, shoes we quite. I forgot a bit of that. Keep it going. Just got a couple over in here somewhere. Rest that by there by all the electrics. Yeah. Right. Get this off. I'll show you. Moving bed. Obviously, moving. I put the 25 litres of K plus from there into there, so I've now got 75 litres of K plus in there, 25 in there, 100 in total. And that 150 litre barrel seems to be handling that amount. I'll put that back on because it's quieter. Um, right, let's see if I can prop you up there. Hopefully, if it falls, I'll see it. Let me just check what you can see. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. So, first of all, turn this, turn the main pump off the UV. Barrel drains down to that point into that barrel. Clunking noise is that non return valve stopping the water going back into the pond. That's why it'll only empty to, to there and not empty all the way to there because of that non return valve. I've got this drain off pipe sitting in the middle of the bucket. I could, none of it's glued inside the, the barrel, so I could bring this drain off pipe closer to this edge because a lot of the crack is closer to the front. So what I have to do is just gently move a bit. So yeah, what I have to do is just gently manoeuvre it to the middle. I'll show you now what I mean. So I've got these drain offs again running off this isol isolator down this pipe to this pump that pumps out into the garden. You see what I mean? It's, it's at this back back edge, but my 
pipe is in the middle. I could trim this pipe down here a bit and suck it right up. We'll probably get away with not using the bog brush. Try. And oh, stick you back up there. Switch on the pump. Two. No, pick it back up again. Water level is there, look. It's drained down to these holes where it's gone into the next barrel. I just need to take that water down a bit now uh, so I can boil it. Oh. Open that. I don't need to turn the pump on because it should gravity drain without that pump. And that will do. <laughs> Happy days. And then back to so these are my ear. So this is the ear to the pond. This is the ear to the moving bed. This is the ear to the barrel number two. I've taken barrel number worn out because obviously you didn't need it as a so I flick that on and flick those two off the pond and the moving bed got a good boil try and do that twice I should do really Get my hose pipe. And just hose. This is sitting on top of the first bank. Let me get my hose pipe and wash that off. There is a slight gap around the edge of this perspex, only a couple of mil, well it's obviously not big enough to let the media up. This K plus media is 10 mil in diameter so the gap's probably 3 or 4 mil, just enough for that crap to get washed down. I just leave that boil now for, you can use it, even it for about 5 minutes but some people boil it for like half an hour. Five, ten minutes seems to be alright for me. Who's the guy? Get on his channel. Now how much 
to this you want to watch. I might fast forward it a bit. I've been feeding sake growth. Takazumi mix. This is a mix of colour and growth. I don't know how much I'm feeding a day. Probably 50, 50 grams, maybe. I could probably up that, but it seems to be alright as it is. It's still a fairly new pond, so I don't want to push it. Not in a rush to grow really big fish. Boiling away nicely in there. Look at that, there. That is with my J Cod PA80. That 80 litres a minute. I, I can't really fault that pump to be honest. I haven't had much experience with pumps, but it wasn't expensive. But I have not to worry about it. I think I do need to probably take that off and check the filter. Um, been boiling it for very long and it comes out clean. I'll give it another minute and then uh, then to dump it. Flick that valve. Switch on the pump. Just take that water out. Just show you it coming out in the garden. Stinking water. We are about sitting so close to the pond. Look at that. I think at some point I might get a big water butt here, like a 200 litre one, and a dirty water pump and try and squirt that water over the garden. I tried doing it with buckets, but it's a bit, a bit like crazy going on, buckets of water flying everywhere and getting wet. It's going down to the earring. The earring sits up off the bottom. Well, the earrings attached to the top of that one, so probably be better if that earring was right down at the bottom. But after two boils, it's clean, so I'm happy with that. You see the earring? It's just that PVC pipe with a T run round with a load of holes drilled in it. They're like six mil holes, four mil maybe. Flick that pump off, close the valve, switch the main pump in the pond on, and that fills that one up. Squeaky clean at the bottom now, didn't do a bad job that, that impressed. Some people um, Koi Pond Lifestyle, I've been watching his videos this week. I think his name's Andy. Uh, I only just found him, but that's a brilliant channel as well, Koi Pond Lifestyle. Um, he likes to do a lot of DIY and, and 
tinker with his filter. Uh, I really enjoy all that. I mean, I could have gone out and bought an Nexus and it would have done all this, but I much prefer doing messing about with things. <laughs> so yeah, that's just filling up now. And it goes into that barrel. Can you see it? No, oh, that's a bit. That plastic isn't very good to see too. I'll oh, just fill this one up again now until the media is just below this plastic disc and do the second boil. While that's boiling, I'll show you my next mug. Sometimes I forget to turn these valves off and it's like just draining straight through. <laughs> Always got to remember to turn them back off. up now and the air is still on to it so it's just started boiling again we do lose a fair amount of water so they're 150 litre barrels and I dumped that one once to get rid of the crap out the bottom and I've been dumping this one twice so 150 300 450, 450 litres, it's uh, just under 7,000 litre pond. So, almost, almost 10% maybe. Oh, that's going up to there. Flick that off again. Just let that boil. It's really clean already, look, in comparison to the first time. Our next mug is a really great channel that I've watched from when I first decided to build a pond. Jifster Koi. Mike at Jifster Koi. If you're like me and you want to do a bit of DIY, Mike likes a bit of DIY. And I really got, I think, once I found him, I watched every one of his back videos. And I think I, I like, I binge watched him for about two weeks. And he must have been going, who is this liking all these videos? Great channel. Great guy. Mikey, this one's for you, boy. Oh. Oh. Shrewsbury Koi. Just a Koi. Great mug. I have sent him one of my mugs. All the best, Coy, mate. All the best, Mikey boy. Keep up the good work. Fish are doing alright. It's calm in there now. next barrel. Bring Mikey with us. It's a left-handed mug look. Oh, that Japanese beer is alright actually, it's a bit expensive like. Hopefully you can see everything up there. Yeah. Lighting on the pond looks really good. I only clipped all the cables tonight, but I rigged it up um, roughly last night. Oh, it looks brilliant.
Mike's just fitted a vortex to his pond. I think in the future, maybe if, if I change my pond to a gravity fed system, and I like the idea of these vortexes. As you can see, all that crap at the bottom and gone. That'll do. She's clean. Thing is, that, that 80 litre, you know, that's giving that a good bashing, that is. Open the valve. Uh, flick the pump. Just going to see how green that water is now coming out of there. What a mucking it is. Almost clear that. So it's the best watered tree in uh, Bristol. sponges oh, I, like, I hated cleaning them I did it I cleaned them twice and I was like they've got to go and I found this bit of perspex and work chop cut it out and I did it it's really working great but cleaning those sponges not a bit of me at all not for me To turn this on, I've got to top the pond up. And a three stage dechlorinator. Take that off. Put the main pump and the UV back on. That'll start spinning. Like so. What? Well, turn that off because I'll forget that. That barrel never fills up. I come back ten minutes later, it's empty the pond. I have got a a um, float valve, float switch in the pond. So if it was ever to mess up, it would only drain down about eighteen inches. But I think. Uh, turn that air off in there now. Take it back to the pond and the moving bed. It's filling up slowly. Yeah, I've got the float switch in the pond, so if the water dropped 18 inches, it would shut the pump off. At least I'd, I'd still have oxygen going then. Um, but I think I probably need an overflow for this. If this gets clogged, this barrel's going to get clogged, doesn't it? If you leave it, this barrel will fill up and up and up because that's the barrel that the pump is feeding. So if this one clogs up, that barrel's just going to overflow. So I'm thinking about putting some sort of overflow from here into that barrel so that if it ever clogged, this would fill and overflow into there and return back to the pond. The thing is, it really needs to be a two inch overflow. Uh, it's uh, an idea I'm toying with how I'm going to do it. These barrels, if you if you're going to plan a system like this, there's 200. I think they're 220 litre barrels. They're much better because you haven't got this curve on the side. They're straight up. This this curve is, and I would have gone for those barrels, but if you can see, I I, I wouldn't have fitted three in there. That's why I went for them. But yeah. So that one's up now. Media's lifted all the water's lifted all that media up. 
and passing through the, peak, the perspex, draining nicely. That's it for the filter clean. Right, so getting back to what I was saying, I've got to top the pond up now. A lot of people using three stage um, dechlorinators or big blues. Uh, at the time being, I'm just using that. Oh, I thought I had it written on the bottle, but I, I haven't, so I'm not going to remember what it's called. Sodium thysorylate or something like that. Yeah, well, I got some of that mixed up in your dechlorinator. Two and a half mil per hundred litres. Um, the cap of this milk pot, well, I need to mix them up soon. The cap of this is two and a half mil, give or take. So, 100 litre, 150 litre barrels, three times, three or four capfuls, throw in the pot. Right, so that's all done. Show you my little outside routine. Get you on my tripod. That's how much water I lose. I've lost from that. Haven't fed them much today, so they're hungry. See a lot of people that don't use the three stage dechlorinators or big blues never show you this part. But this is how I do it, I'm going to show you. I know I should have a three stage dechlorinator and maybe a big blue, and I probably will end up going down that route, but I'm just starting off and I haven't got. <laughs> oh, I've spent so much already. I will get there. Um, yeah. Once I put that in, I usually get to work on the old glass. I think I can put you down there. I just use a microfiber cloth with the inside a wipe. I'm in like direct sun here, so. It's quite dirty. Five minutes. It's clean. I should. I was thinking about using like a sponge with a scourer for getting little dots of algae that are a little bit tougher to get off. I don't know whether it will scratch it. So. Maybe one of them fish tank aquarium magnet cleaners might be better. Or am I just complicating things? This only takes five minutes, it's not the end of the world, is it? Not to say, I put that to thorn air in, but I never put the hose in. I have the hose on the mist.
Probably should do this before I filter clean. So that any algae that I mess that I rub off goes through the filter. But there's a reason why I do it after and I'll show you now. I don't know how you clean it if you had a deeper window. This is only 600, so my arm goes in nicely, but I can imagine if you had a 900 window or a meter, you'd have to get a brush or something. I'm quite happy doing it like this. My KH is really hard here. So because my air stone is over there, I get a build-up of lime scale on that top part. It's not in the water. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in there. I'll try and show you. Get a little bit more of this. I'll show you it. Ah, the camera's up. Can you see it? Yeah, if I sh shine it in that light. There, see that lime scale? And it doesn't come off with uh, just plain water. I'm not sure if I've been doing that, should be doing this. I've been using white vinegar. This is from Wilkinson's 1 pound 50. I'm not sure if it should be going in the pond, but I use very little. I don't put it in the pond, and my pH test has been the same since they started the pond. So this is what I do. I don't actually get it in the water, but I think this is why I do it after I've done the filter clean, so I've got more space. it completely takes it off as easy as that. I didn't do it when I started the pond for about three months and it was it went white, couldn't see through it at the top. And I didn't really realise how bad it was looking but when I cleaned it with this I was like wow it looks brand new again. Same one as I used for the inside. Just do the outside with it as well. Don't use any window cleaner or anything, I don't see the point. This has been getting it perfectly clean. Right, last koi mug. That's it for the clean. Just gotta wait for it to top back up. Uh, usually takes an hour. My uh, skimmer pump has 
fails, so that's not working at the moment. That was one I got given, so I'm thinking about getting a beer repump 10,000, but I need to save up some pennies. But to be honest, I don't really get that much. The whole time I was working and I was emptying it, there was never anything in the basket. So, and I, it's not been working for about two weeks. I haven't really had a scum on the top. So, I'm not in a rush to get it, but. Right, then the final cup is my cup. The old we got Shrewsbury coin. Oh, Mike's still in the garage. Let's get Mike back out in the shed, I mean. Let's get Mike back out. Just the coin. Where is it, Mike? There he is. Gifts of Sky, Shrewsbury Kai. And the main event, Brizzle Kai. You see of that? Pretty cool. Got an old Brunel Kai. Seen as Bristol had so many ties to Brunel. Sweet. I'm gonna do a little giveaway as well, so I've got a few. I'm going to send a few out to some channels that I really enjoy watching. Popsy, yours is on the way, slowly. I, I will find a box. Uh, actually, where's Popsy, guys? Let's go and get Popsy as well. What? Oh. Are you still filming this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Caught the missus coming out of the bath, eh, boys? Here's Popsy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a boy. Yeah, popsy coin as well. Four mugs. I have a beer on my own, don't I? Ah, uh, all gone. This is Koi. Here's to subscribe, like, if you've enjoyed this. Alright, I'll get back to you when the pond's full. Right guys, that spring, brings us to the end of the video. It's working good. The old swirl filter is working good. I just wanted to show you the lighting on the pond, which looks awesome. Look at that. Come on, I am super happy with that. <laughs> Put you up there for a minute. Got some foam on the top of the water. As I said, my skimmer pup is on the blink. We've got the four mugs, Shrewsbury Koi, check him out, definitely worth checking out, Rob, good lad, Mike, Jiffs the Koi, it's into DIY stuff, watch all his videos, Popsy, he's a boy, beautiful fish, big fish now, I wish my missus fed me 180 grams a day. And then I'm the latest Brizzle Koi.
Now I've sent a couple out to YouTubers, but there are a few. I'm going to win one of these. Here's the question. Pop the answer in the comments below. Um, what's the name of the fish that my dad bought me? And if you don't know the answer, do what I do. Scroll down to the comments. See what someone else has written. And then put your answer in. Let's we'll see if we can name all these fish now. So we got the Hiatsuri, the Kahaku, Survivor, the Comet, who thinks he's a koi. Uh, there's Showa, the Hiatsuri, Asagi, Benny Kikikuru, Deutz Kahaku. And the Chagoy, whose name is. <laughs> can't tell you. Oh, I've got a Sh Jinrin Shiro, who's only tiny, he's like 17 cm. He's in there somewhere. He's down there eating the algae off the edge. As I said before, they're probably all reject fish, but I got a soft spot for them all. I really do like them. To get my uh, skimmer working, get rid of all these bubbles, but I'm really happy with this. Super, super happy. Bit of a long one tonight, guys. Good night.